Hi friend, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting, and in this video and the next one, we're going to sequence a song in X-Lights. This is just an example. It should be helpful to you. If you're brand new to sequencing, you haven't done this before, I just want to walk you through my process that I kind of, how I kind of organically feel through a song. Maybe organically is not the right word, but the way I just go through a song, bring it in, and how I go ahead and create a sequence in X lights. Now, if you are new here, make sure to hit like on this video and subscribe to Learn Christmas Lighting because I've got more stuff coming for you. Also, head over to learnchristmaslighting.com where I've got a free guide about the things you need to know before you build your first Christmas light display. Let's build a sequence. So I've just launched X lights. This is uh, August 31st, 2019 is the version I'm using. I haven't updated in a little bit because they're constantly pushing updates. I'm going to go ahead, go to my sequencer. I've already created all my layout. I'm going to go ahead and press new sequence. I'm going to do a musical sequence. This is a great wizard, by the way. I'm going to bring in O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. I normalized it in another video on how to uh, prepare audio for your Christmas light show that actually I think is going to come out after this. I'm going to do it at 20 frames per second. I truly believe, um, you know, there's some people that say, gosh, they need that extra 25 milliseconds. I don't think you can tell, and I think it's been pretty well proven, but, you know, whatever. Um, it's half the data. Then we'll go ahead and do all models, do quick start. And so now it's come in. It's brought in all my models here. I can see them all here. I can see all my groups. I can move them around if I need to just by right clicking and edit display elements. I can then drag this stuff around as desired, but I'm going to leave it as it is. No, actually I'll go ahead and edit my display elements. Call this master view. And I just want to take my all group. I want to drag that to the top. I want to take my null blackout group, drag that all the way to the bottom. Oops. That was not the right thing. That's okay. So my AC lights, drag them up, whoop, and call it good. All right, not super particular there. Again, if I'm sequencing and I need to move stuff later, I can. So first things first is I want to set my timing basically using the Queen Mary Vamp plugins. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to right click on my new timing here, press add a timing track. I'm going to set, I like to do bars, press OK. Beats per bar is four, assuming that this song is in 4-4, four, four, which it's rock music, so I think it is. Again, I'm not really a musician, so I apologize for that. Then I'll add another new timing track, and I like to do beats. Again, same settings. Cool. Now I've got those two. I can now go ahead and delete that new timing, which has nothing. And I can zoom in at this point. Oops, sorry about that. Turn that down so I can zoom in. I just used a control in my scroll wheel on my mouse. If you're on a laptop, I highly suggest using a mouse when sequencing. And now I can click anywhere. A few quick things is I can click anywhere on this top bar to play. Okay. So just clicking on this very top bar is going to play. If I want to select and work with a particular section of the music, I can do this, and that's going to play that particular section. In fact, if I just do a small section, you can see it here. It's just going to play that section. And then if I right click and do that, I can put in a marker. So those are the basics, and now let's get down to actual sequencing. Okay, you can obviously spend a lot of time doing sequencing and some people even do this as their full-time gig and that's great. So what I like to do first when I'm sequencing is I like to actually break some stuff around here but I'm only recording one monitor so I'm just going to make this bigger so I can see my previews, my house and my model better. Awesome. And so I'm just going to hit play and I'm going to listen to the first part of this track.
I'm going to find that approximate place where the music changes first. And what I like to map out first is I just like to map out my all group and just put something there. I'm kind of set a background color for everything. I'm literally just going to drag this first. It can seem overwhelming at first, especially if you know you have a lot of props and a lot of things you want to do. But I just encourage you to just get into it and just start dragging some stuff in. So I can see like right here is obviously uh, my first change in the music. I know I've been looking at audio for a long time, but you can hear it here. Yeah, so it was actually right, right about here, just a little bit further. Right there around between 9 and 10. So I'm just going to start this first clip here. I'm just going to go ahead, and the first thing that I'm going to lay down is a color. So the color for the start of it... I want to use my imagination here. Of course, the band is called August Burns Red. And red does seem fitting. So let's just go ahead and turn that red. I just turned off the color white here, so just red is selected in the color tab. And so now I got to decide what I want as the next background color. I think I'm just going to keep it red through at least this point um, and just do some flashy stuff in the midst here. So let's jump ahead to where we are. So here we get a part where things really slow out. And then they come back. So I'm just going to copy and paste this as such. Again, real rough here, but I'm just going to go and set some... Uh, also set some transitions. So if I bring this down and go to layer blending, there's an in transaction transition and out. And that's really important. So like on the in, I'm just going to set a rough. I think I want two seconds on the in. On the out of this one, I think I just want a half second. Not sure, but I'll check it as I go. With this one, again, we'll just set them both to one. See, see if it's what we like. We can always tweak it later. You can see alongside of the timeline as well, this green or at the end, I believe it's it's red or black. I don't know if there's a red effect. It shows you where that transition is going to line up with the music. So I can see here, for example. I can see that fade in there and I can see how it's matched to that clip. So scrolling around, I'm going to hold shift and scroll to go side to side. I'm now just going to drag this red out, at least all the way to this part of the clip. This is a metal song, so it's pretty easy to see what it's loud and what it's not. Yeah, and the way that this song ends, as I do remember, is that it really is pretty chill for that last segment there. And so what I want to do is I'm going to turn off my all group. I'm just going to use my all group during these harder parts. And then at the end, I'm not going to use my all group at all. Um, and so then I'm going to go. I've, I kind of put my things, I like to put them kind of in the order that I'm going to use them in. And so now I start to think about my AC lights. These are just strands that turn on and off. They're not pixels, okay? And so when I think about them, I think, okay, on this song, I just want to use them to highlight things, kind of like a stage lighting blinder. So like if I go back here... I could literally start something right here just to highlight what's going on. Actually, let's go to the start of the song. That'll be easier. So I could literally right here start with my AC lights. 
gonna click the AC to turn them on. And if your AC lights toolbar is not on, just go to view at the top of the screen and AC lights toolbar, at which point I can drag that out as needed. So it was kind of a get rid of boxes as I need to as well. Not being super musical, I'm going to skip through here where I made some guesses at the timing of this uh, particular flash that I wanted, and then I'll show you what I came up with. Yeah, we definitely want to do a four on, four off here. What was I thinking? This is music, David. One, two, three, four. And then I go ahead, let's go to my snowflakes actually. So right there, at about 17 seconds is where some stuff starts to come in. That's real cool. So I'm gonna go down to my snowflakes now, turn off my AC. Let's go ahead, let's start with a fan. So right at 17 seconds right there in measure nine. We're gonna go ahead. Well, actually I want this to be on my snowflakes. So now I can visualize this in my model preview. And I actually wanna do it. I actually wanna break this down individually. to each snowflake. So now I just see one snowflake. I can now go ahead and look at my effect settings here. Looks like the center's pretty good. I just want to drag some of this around till I get what I want. I think we're going to do a nice orange here. Do a red yellow, maybe. Let's create that orange. Okay, so now we've got a pretty nice spinning effect going on. So now let's just go ahead and pl figure it out. All right, so it's definitely gonna fade out by then. And so, now that we've got the basics going, we just gotta make sure it looks right. So for example, I'm watching this right now, I'm clicking on it, I'm watching it, and I say, okay, that is way too slow for what I'm looking to do here. I'm gonna click the center of the effect, Go ahead and tweak it. Okay, that's what I like now. I cranked up the revs and it's now moving much faster. So that's one effect I could start with. I'm just gonna copy that, control C, paste it on each of my chroma flakes. So now during this part of the song, I can see they're all going. We're all doing this in my house preview.
And so that is basically the start. I don't want to bore you here, but I do want to save it. Um, I don't want to bore you here. And so save my sequence and I'm going to pause there now. I'll fast forward through parts of this. And then in part two, I'm going to go back and I'm going to sequence everything out because this is going to take some time. And I'm going to come back in part two and show you what I've done and show you um, and hopefully give you some really good tips on how to apply this to your display. So if you do like this, be sure to subscribe here on Learn Christmas Lighting. Let me know in the comments below what you've liked. And then check out LearnChristmasLighting.com to learn more about how to get started this year. Thanks.